Welcome! In this video, I'll demonstrate how to deploy a Next.js application built as a static site to GitHub pages. We will need a Next.js application to deploy first. To obtain one, I will go to next.js.org and use the templates link in the top navigation. This takes me to vercel.com slash templates. Here we have useful starter templates for Next.js. I will use the blog one. As you can see, there are multiple block templates. I'll use this one, Block Starter Kit. There are a few details about this template, which I can see here on the Purcell template page. It's a statically generated block generated from markdown files. This is important. GitHub Pages supports static sites, so the end target that we built through Next needs to be a static site, which this is. I can open a demo here to see the actual template, and it's a simple blog app with a few images and a detail page. We only have three blog posts. To use it, I will go down to the how to use section, and we can use it directly with create next app using the example option, specifying blog starter. This is the name of the project. So I'll copy this directly and go to my terminal. I'll paste it and only change my project title, which for me will be Next.js Block Deployment. Create Next app completed. Now I'll cd into the Next.js Block Deployment directory and I'll open it with Visual Studio Code. I will close the terminal and we have our Next.js project files. The first thing I'll do is run the project with npm run dev to make sure all dependencies are working and the project actually compiles. And I see that everything is compiling correctly. I see all of the blog posts, their images and assets. And if I open the detail page in one of the posts, it's also rendering correctly. The next step for deployment is to generate a static site. To do that, I'll go to the Next.js documentation and search for static generation and static exports. The, act the article name is actually static exports. And here we see an explanation on how to configure next through the next config.js file for static exports. We just need to set output to export. In this specific case, we don't actually have a next config.js file, so I'll create one. Next.js will automatically pick it up if it's in the project root directory. I'll copy this example here and change it to two spaces, format it a bit. Now, we need output export for sure in order to set the output move to static files. And we have additional options from which I will use the dist dir option. As you can see here, we get an explanation that the output directory by default is out. And this option changes it to dist or any other user specified directory name. I actually like the dist directory. It's more frequently used for JavaScript and Node.js project as the output directory than out. So I'll use that. Now, if I run npm run build, I should get my static site. But in this case, we are actually expecting one more error. We'll wait for the build to fail and I'll show you what the error is at this stage. The next build attempted to generate the static pages, but it failed because image optimization using the default loader is not compatible with the export mode. So we don't get the image optimization with default loader when exporting a static site. And we need to set images unoptimized to true. We can do that in the next config.js file and set that option. Now if I run npm run build again, this time my build should succeed and I should get my static site. The build succeeded. Now I'll run npx serve in the this directory to check on my actual static site. If I open it first, I can validate that I get my index.html file, a 404 HTML file, and other assets, JavaScript files, and routes, as well as images. If I open my serve static file server, my blog is actually rendering correctly. And I can open posts. It's working very quickly because it's a static, pre rendered static site. The next step is to deploy it to GitHub pages. I'll stop the static file server. And I will go to GitHub. Here, I'll create a new repository. This is my personal GitHub profile. I'll call the repository Next.js Block Deployment. I will keep it public and not add anything else. 
Now, if I run git status in my project, I do have a git repository here because create next app set that up. And the this directory is new as well as next config.js. I need my next config.js file, I don't need the this directory. We will build the next.js project with GitHub actions after I push. So I need to include the this directory in my git ignore. If I check git status now, I have modified git ignore and my this directory is not here. So I can make a commit with my two modified files. And now to push, I need to add the remote to this GitHub repository using git remote add, and I will push to the main branch. If I refresh GitHub now, I get all of my files in the entire project in GitHub. The next step is to set up GitHub pages and the deployment workflow. I need to go to the repository settings. Under code and automation, we have the pages section. Here we have an explanation about GitHub pages, more information linking to the documentation, and under built-in deployment, we have source. By default, it's deployed from a branch. We want to deploy using GitHub Actions. And GitHub actually detected that this is an XGS application and it recommends a GitHub Action template to configure it, which we can actually use. If I press configure, it suggests creating a commit to create a directory under .github workflows and then a YML file called Next.js. You can change the name of the file to anything and this is the workflow GitHub pages suggests. I will actually commit it as is and check it out in my Visual Studio code. I want to commit directly to the main branch and we can directly commit changes. Now if I pull, from my local repository, I get this GitHub folder and my Next.js workflow. All right, now let's check out what this workflow includes. It has a name, which is currently deploying Next.js site to pages. That's all right for me, it's descriptive enough. On is when this workflow runs. By default, this runs on push to the main branch. This might not be ideal on production in most cases. You might want to actually run workflow on pull requests or manually to have more control because this way any push to the main branch will mean a deployment. But in this case, for the tutorial, I'll leave it exactly as it is. Workflow dispatch allows you to actually manually trigger the deployment workflow. We have permissions and these are the actual jobs built and deploy, we have two jobs. Let's check out build first. It runs on Ubuntu latest, and then we have a, an if else condition, which checks if we're using yarn or npm. We'll leave that as it's very nice. Uh, if we ever decide to switch to yarn, it will work out of the box. Here we have some options, specifying the node version to 16, this will work fine for now. You might need to change it later if you update your project and this node version is not compatible anymore. And then the actual workflow is right here. This is what we care about. We install dependencies, which we need. We build and we run next export. This is actually not necessary anymore. Next export was used previously to generate an export before we could do output export. It's not deprecated, so I actually need to remove it. If you don't remove it, the workflow will run with a warning that next export is deprecated. It shouldn't fail. And last, the port artifact setting path to out. I actually need to change that because my path is this. Okay, this is the change I made in build. In deploy, I actually don't need to change anything in deploy. It will deploy the GitHub pages, the files to GitHub pages. So if I save now and check my git status, I modified the workflow a bit. So I'll make a commit and push to main. If you remember from the triggers, pushing to main should actually make this workflow run. So let's check GitHub. First, I have my commit here and a job that is running indicated by this dot here next to the commit hash. If I go to actions, you can see my workflow actually running with the name of the commit. 
Here we have the Point.js site to pages and the two jobs, build and deploy. If I open the job, I can see more details and walks for each individual step. Everything up to install dependencies, run and completed without errors, we're now at build. We'll wait for this to finish. The build job finished without any errors and we now get the deploy job starting after it. The deploy job also completed without any errors and now our site should be deployed successfully. If I go back to settings, pages, you see your site is live, at, and here we see the actual path where we can find our site. It's your username.github.io slash the work of the repository. And the site is partially working. As you can see, the images are missing. Otherwise, I can open individual routes and the content seems to be working correctly. So the images are missing because if I check the source code, they're expected to be at this route because they're in the public folder under my username.github.io and directly under asset. The reality is that GitHub pages host my site at this domain, but under the Next.js block deployment folder, which is the name of the swag of my repository. To do that, we need to implement a little bit of extra logic here. First, we will go to the next config.js file and set the base path property. And the base path property, we want to set to Next.js block deployment. But that is only in production. If I run this up with npm run dev, it's currently working correctly because I don't need that base path. And to keep that functionality, here in my config file, I'll check if the environment is production with a simple variable. And I'll check process environment variables node env. This environment variable is set to development when you run the project with npm run dev and production when you're running npm run build. This is very standard practice in most Node.js applications. Now with the ternary operator, I can check if the environment is production in that case, use this base path, otherwise set it to empty string. Great. Now this, if I build locally during build, the environment variable is production. So I will get my base path configuration. And if I build now, you will see that I've partially fixed the problem. I will run again the server with surf and open. As expected, the styles and images are not loading. And for most things, like my anchor tag, for example, you can see that my base path is working. I get my prefix, which is next.js book deployment, and then the correct route. But for my images, I still don't get that prefix. Why is that? Because my images are generated. If I open my pages folder, this template is still using the pages router, which in this case is not very relevant. Even if you were using the app router, the actual deployment process would still be the same. Here, if I trace how my actual posts are generated, going to my index file, you can see all posts are taken from this function, get all posts. If I control click on it, I've taken to the lib folder and I have an api.ts file where I have this logic get all posts that uses this get post by swork method to retrieve a post from the files in this directory. These are markdown files, which I can see now include this matter header, which specifies the images URLs. And they're statically specified, so Next doesn't handle that. We need to implement special logic for that. And this function which retrieves them would be the perfect place to do so because as you can see, we do certain transformation for all the fields and then return the item. So here's my plan for this. We have three images here with paths. I include this string, which will be base path and replace it in all posts with the base path if it's available, but this won't happen automatically. I will need to do this manually. So I need to implement a logic for that. I can implement that now right here in the get post by swag option. Here we do multiple transforms on each field. And because as you can see, some fields are in the root, others 
are nested inside other fields. What I'll do to actually convert all of my replace URL string instances, that's what I want to do. I want to take all of these strings and replace them with my base URL from the next config.js file, which I will import right now. So I need to replace this and all of its occurrences with config base URL, base path, I'm sorry. And this also needs to be path. Let me check if I specified path. Yeah, I specified path everywhere. So to replace that, we have an array of objects here, actually an object, items, which have nested items. So I will convert that to string with JSON string defined. Then I will change that by replacing all occurrences using a regular expression. I will set my regular expression to look for this specific string. I need to escape the dollar signs and the curly braces as they're used in regular expressions. And I'm using the gfarc to take all occurrences with I'll replace them with config base path. So now I convert the items to string. Then I replace all instances of base path with my base path configured variable, my string. And then I need to set items to JSON parse item string. JSON parse will convert the string back to an object. And I need to convert items to a variable, not a constant. And now I can return items. This logic should replace base path with. All right. I also left a comment here. Now, if I build, I can test my logic. And we do get an error. We have left hand assignment right here in the next config.js file. Okay, this is a syntactic error. This should be comparison right here. Let's build again now. My site built correctly, so I will open it by using surf first and open the dist folder. Let's check the image paths now in the inspector. So my image cover image is correctly being prefixed. If I open my individual routes, which I need, I need to modify the URL in this case to check them. My alter image is also prefixed correctly. That's great. And let's check OG. Okay, the OG image is also prefixed correctly. So my logic is working fine. And now I need to add these changes and commit. Add a specific commit message and push to main. This push should now trigger a deployment in my actions workflow. And it did. We'll wait for that to complete and check if the issue with the assets loading is fixed. The build and deployment process passed correctly and in my deploy workflow, I actually get the link to my deployed block. And now the images on the index page are working correctly and loading and my author images are working as well. If I open the detail page here, all images are also loading as expected. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the next video in the series is released. Take care.